Hey everybody, this is Greg DeRocher from Safe Ride for Kids, where our mission is to help you make every arrival a safe arrival. This video is going to be dedicated really to those uh, who are in a position of needing to transport their young children via, you know, taxi or ride share or car service, you know, a situation where you're not going to be uh, hauling your car seat along with you. And, you know, some people in major cities, New York, Singapore, this is how they get around. This is how they do it. And um, we want to give you an option to do it safely, but we also want to educate on some of the, the things you want to avoid. Uh, we've heard from a couple customers where they were even advised by their doctor to do some things that were potentially very unsafe for the child. And so the question is, if you have to travel with your little one, how do you do that safely? Um, one of the things that we've the dangerous things that people do is they will actually put their child on their lap and then buckle the seatbelt on top of both of them. Now, we understand the desire and the intention to keep your child safe. And let me explain to you why this is a really dangerous thing to do. The formula that we use as car seat text when we're talking to parents, or as text when we're talking to parents, is speed times weight re equals the restraining force. Now I weigh about 200 pounds, and let's say I'm involved in just a 10 mile an hour crash. It's gonna require 2,000 pounds of force on this seat belt to restrain me and hold me from moving forward. Now if little Brody here is on my lap between me and the seatbelt, he's going to have to absorb all 2,000 pounds of me trying to move forward with the seatbelt holding us both back. So this is extremely dangerous and potentially a fatal situation for a young person who's restrained between the adult and the parent. So worst case scenario, the child is gonna be sitting in the vehicle seat next to you and buckled up. Now why would we do this without a child restraint? In most cities, or in most states, most countries, car service licensed taxis, uh, car services are exempt from the car seat laws. So it could be potentially legal to ride just like this. Not necessarily safe, but safer than with the child sitting on your lap. Ideally, we want the child in their own restraint system so that they're getting optimum protection regardless of what the law says. The laws of physics don't really change regardless of where you are. So the number one purpose of a seatbelt is to keep occupants in the vehicle, right? So with this scenario, we're at least achieving that. The second concept or principle of child restraints, car seats, is to contact the strongest points of the body. Now this vehicle seems to do a very good job of, with this seatbelt is actually pretty good on Brody's hips here, even though he's only just turned four years old. The shoulder part is a little high here on him, but a lot of parents misunderstand that the seatbelt being close to the neck is a safety issue. That's not really the safety issue. The safety issue is, is that it's uncomfortable. And if it's uncomfortable here, young people are tempted to either put it under their arm like this, which essentially leaves them in a crash, folding over the seatbelt. Thanks Brody, you're doing great. Or they put it behind their back like this, which again, leaves them in just a lap only belt and in a crash is extremely dangerous for their little tummy organs here. So this is better than being on the child's lap or parent's lap. It's better than not being in a seatbelt at all, but it's not ideal. The third option, which is what we recommend is, we have an amazingly convenient product called the Ride Safer Travel Vest that is made, it's certified for kids three years old and up, three years old and 30 pounds. And this is actually a certified child restraint system that properly positions the seatbelt. So I'm gonna take just a second here and get Brody buckled up in a Ride Safer Vest to show you how easy it is. All right, let's get your vest on, buddy. Now, like I said, Brody just turned four a few days ago, 
and he weighs, well, I don't know, maybe a little over, a little under 40 pounds. So he's not um, the, the, the smallest kid that's certified for it, but he's, he's still pretty little. So now the Ride Safer 2 comes with a tether strap that can just go right here, buckle into the vehicle's tether anchor system. Then the seatbelt comes across the top of the child. Let's get the right buckle. There we go. Now, right here on the shoulder, the shoulder belt clips in to the little clip on the shoulder. Velcro closes. We go to the lap belt. Lap belt slips into the clips on the lap. And then we pull the looseness out and snug the tether to just a neutral tension. We don't want it lifting on the vest. We just want a nice neutral tension. Now, Brody is in his own certified child restraint system. And I can buckle up right next to him. And make sure that he stays properly positioned for the whole trip. The tether is optional as long as we have a lap and shoulder belt. So even if we were just using the Ride Safer 2 without the tether, you can see that the way the seatbelt performs doesn't change at all. So this is what we think is the best option, the most flexibility and the most convenience for parents who ride with their kids in the car. And you can see here, little ones like this, they like to goof around and stuff. So that's why it's important to either use the tether to reduce how far they can move forward or, let's not pick our nose on video, um, or, uh, <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> that was the other kid who's watching us today. <laughs> um, Brody's properly positioned. He's protected. Crash forces are going to be distributed and we're good to go. So remember that safety is about putting the odds in your favor.